Welcome to the Mariah Jean Fit YouTube channel. I'm Coach Mariah. Make sure you like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos as much as possible so we can reach a broader audience. We appreciate your support and enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to another vlog on YouTube and podcast by the Fit Minds podcast on Spotify. If you are tuning in on there, thank you so much for um, following our podcast. And for those who are watching the vlog, thank you for being so committed to looking at my face for up to an hour sometimes. So uh, today we're going to talk about practicing drastic acceptance. And if you've come across this podcast, you've probably thought about this idea, this concept, this way of thinking before just to um, enter into this podcast with the idea that I'm not a psychologist, I am a coach and mentor, a life coach, as well as a fitness and nutrition coach. I don't like to use the word life coach because I think that if you are going to coach fitness and nutrition that you should have that component in there as well. Mindset is a massive part of fitness and nutrition and achieving what you want to with yourself and I do believe that it is encompassed. So I'm going to tackle the topic of drastic acceptance and why it is something that most of us should practice on a certain level daily to be able to get through. And it's certainly not something that's suggested to do all of the time, but maybe might be needed for some of you who are getting hung up on things uh, continuously. If you're getting stuck with things like uh, negative thought patterns, or if you are really struggling with guilt, or if you are struggling with um, you know, holding yourself to the past, there are lots of different things that people can tend to get stuck on. And I think more specifically on the topic of nutrition and training, where people are beating themselves up if they're not accomplishing certain tasks in a certain amount of time, or if they are making mistakes. And this kind of teaches you how to deal with that, how to move forward. Also on the same note, for those of you who are well advanced through your fitness journey or even so maybe midway through and you might have loved ones that question what you do or people who you're trying to turn you know over to your the dark side <laughs> I actually think it's the light side but the side where you know where you're enjoying your life where you're enjoying daily exercise where you have adjusted your nutrition and made those changes and you might find there might be people in your life that are struggling to understand that, who might want to start arguments with you. So this will probably apply to um, lots of different scenarios, but I'm going to apply it to the context of fitness and nutrition and obviously life goals. So what is drastic acceptance? It's also known as, known as radical acceptance. And in the psychological realm, they use um, DBT and CBT. Obviously, these are different behavioral therapies to treat uh, people um, with trauma, etc. But we're not going to go down that path today because obviously that's not my niche and that's certainly not my area of expertise. We're going to talk about this from a perspective of um, building resilience in your life and probably a common, I wouldn't even call it an issue, but just certainly a, a, a thing that I see, a behavior I see, or you know, even with clients, um, patterns that I see uh, is this idea that they get stuck. They get really stuck on, um, for example, missing their workouts. They might be really upset with themselves for missing a workout. They may ruminate on the idea that they have not followed their nutrition accurately for the day or for the entire week. And this is where I've done a podcast on it before, but where self-sabotage can sometimes come in as well. So um, basically we need to build resilience um, it's required to persevere through hardship and uh, kind of prevents you from staying stuck mentally. So you're stuck for a shorter period of time. It would be ill of me to say that we want to be positive all of the time. You know, we, we, have, we all have those friends that, oh, it'll be okay and just think positively and, you know, um, oh, you'll get past it and it's not that bad very dismissive statements from friends and family that can start to feel like people just don't care about our feelings. Uh, that's certainly not what we're going to say um, in this podcast, not the direction I'm trying to go in, but certainly it can help you when you radically accept something or when you drastically accept something, and it could be anything, it could be lots of different things going on in your life or maybe something that has happened, but 
um, it can help you stay stuck for a shorter period of time. And that's kind of what we're aiming at is that we want to recover faster from things that set us back. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to get yourself right back up uh, as soon as you've fallen off or something's, you know, it depends on the severity. It depends on what you're going through. Lots of people have lots of different personal issues, which obviously I don't need to dive into, but really um, it allows you the freedom to move forward from situations when you can accept. So I'm going to dive into um, some of the other benefits of practicing drastic acceptance and then how people can do that. I probably started practicing acceptance in my own life when it was introduced to me from uh, my psychologist and people around me as well. Like there were a lot of people and um, life mentors, there were motivational speakers, etc that came into my life or even I suppose what I was exposed to um, when I was about 20 going through some mental health conditions myself. I speak from personal experience and I certainly can't force my opinion on the world. It's not my place to do so, but um, it helped me. And I really think that if I can help other people somehow, um, you know, take a path of their own where they might come out of a struggle like I did and it might help, you know. So this definitely comes from this uh, this podcast. There's certainly a lot of personal standpoint uh, and, and personal practice, but also um, some of the methods, not necessarily from, you know, managing other people's behaviours or anything, but some of the methods of, um, you know, the speech that I use with my clients and things where I encourage them to move forward and to not beat themselves up and, um, and to actually accept and, and to grow. So, um, so what it does is... Drastic acceptance differ differentiates the feeling from, uh, you know, so rumination or, obs or obsession, um, self-hatred, hatred towards others. So it, it kind of allows you to just feel something, whether it be neutral, you know, a negative or positive feeling about something, whatever you might, you might not even know how you feel about something. Uh, and it, it separates you from ruminating, obsessing, um, feeling a lot of self-hatred or hatred towards others. So it basically allows you to um, acknowledge the feeling and what's actually happening for you at the time and go, yes, this is real, you know? Like uh, in the case of nutrition, yes, I struggle with my eating. Yes, I struggle with my eating adherence. I don't at the moment, but I did. And yes, it is really hard. You know, all of this stuff is, is part of accepting. And until we start doing that, we really can't move forward anyway. Instead of obviously taking the feelings that we're having and just turning them straight into these, uh, this type of energy that seems to only really harm us or other people. And that comes from those, those lash outs and um, you know, either being on attack or defense constantly with pretty much everything. But I see it a lot with nutrition and fitness where we see, and this is where it might be smart, especially if you're quite... Uh, if you've got some complex issues with nutrition where you're finding that you're binge eating or you might be starving yourself constantly or you're not able to listen to a coach or take direction with regards to um, nurturing your body and doing the right thing by your body, even following a plan, you may actually need some extra care from a dietitian who specializes in um, eating behaviors um, or a psychologist. And it seems like people just don't want to go and see these specialists because they are avoiding these deep-seated issues. So if you can't take a lot from this podcast and you and you think you're still really struggling, I certainly recommend seeing a health professional that might be suitable for what you're struggling with in particular. And it's so different um, for each person, but avoiding it is not going to make it uh, go away or get better. So it helps us practice mindfulness and enjoying living in the moment rather than the past or the future which um, mindfulness is certainly something that's thrown around a lot. You know, you hear about people meditating or just being mindful. And I think that that can be a really dismissive statement, just be more mindful. Um, really being mindful is just a case of bringing yourself to where you are right now. So right now I'm in my office, I'm filming a vlog. I'm thinking about filming this vlog and only doing that and being present with my viewers. Uh, perhaps maybe if I wasn't practicing accepting where I am and, and, and the like, I, my mind may be wandering. So mindfulness is a practice of, um, I suppose sometimes, yes, gratitude in the moment, but bringing yourself to where you are instead of dragging yourself uh, backwards or forwards where we aren't. So it's actually really hard to do. It's certainly not an easy task being mindful, 
but this is a constant reminder. Mindfulness isn't something that you master and then you perfect it and that's it. It's something that you have to pra practice and you get better with and you have to remind yourself uh, constantly to be mindful, to enjoy, embrace and um, to acknowledge, to, to actually you know, be present. So, and you will find that a lot of people probably aren't practicing being present, you know, or even so maybe immersed in technology. So you might be, it's fine that you're listening to this YouTube vlog or podcast on your phone. But I mean, how many times today have you disappeared into the world of technology instead of doing what you maybe want to be doing or should be doing because you're avoiding the world? So um, a lot of that mindfulness practice is, is actually bringing yourself back to what you want to be doing for the day instead of pulling yourself uh, over to things like addictions, uh, which actually include social media. It can include social media. It can include smoking, alcohol, drugs, like you name it. Uh, we are not our addictions. If we do have addictions, I kicked literally every single one of my addictions from my past, which went from an eating disorder to actually prior to that, I was an alcoholic, a binge drinker. I was a smoker, a full-time smoker. So I didn't get over addictions by... Uh, and, and get past addictions by uh, actually I did go to therapy but inside of that all of the addictions just surfaced in different ways so we know that they were different coping mechanisms um, and a lot of uh, finding the right coping mechanisms actually comes down to acknowledging your feelings and your emotions so it is very psychological but um, a lot of people you'll find most people are addicted to a substance because that's the thing, that's their crutch, that's the thing that they use to cope. So uh, mindfulness is, if you are practicing mindfulness enough, you actually find that you lead, need addictions less and less because uh, you don't use them as an escape from where you are because you don't need to. You know, you can be where you are. Obviously, that can be uncomfortable and comfortable sometimes. Sometimes where you are is great and sometimes where you are isn't so great. And that's part of this whole concept is that, you know, being where you are is part of uh, accepting where you are. So it's an interesting idea, but it can help you um, face reality the way it is and, and possibly uh, not the way that we perceive it to be as this uh, super scary or even you know, super thrilling experience all the time. It doesn't always have to be those extremes. So um, it also allows us to embrace change and move forward uh, slash recover from adversity. So basically in saying that, I mean... Um, uh, especially with clients, actually, I see this a lot and I use this as an example because, I mean, this is obviously never about any individual client. So this is important whenever I speak about clients, it's always as a broader scope. And certainly I like to use examples of those who struggle with changing their nutrition, you know, or changing a method. So it might be that they've not tracked macros before or they've not done a resistance training program before. They've only ever done F45 or they've only done cardio or they've only done uh, meal plans. You know, they've only done a thing a certain way for a long period of time. And uh, practicing acceptance is really just a case of if you have done something a certain way for a long period of time, it's also accepting that change is not always negative. In fact, we can create, we can turn change into this big dragon, you know, this big scary dragon. Change is just too scary, it's too much, and I can't deal with it right now. And the interesting thing is, is that even though we say we can't deal with change right now, we actually are. We're dealing with change all of the time. You know, it could be change in prices of things. It could be having to move house. It could be changes in relationships. It could be changes in your food preferences. It could be changes in your health. But we actually don't realize how many changes are happening on a daily basis that we can't avoid. And if we constantly try to avoid change, we end up getting this really negative relationship towards change, right? So towards things like learning, towards things like struggling, towards things like um, you know, not having an easy time with something, just simply um, getting into that sticky bit, whether it's learning how to track your macros, whether it's learning new habits, whether it's uh, changing your lifestyle slightly, changing your routine, you know, changing what time you get up in the morning, changing uh, what time you go and train, changing uh, your training regime. A lot of people are really weirded out by that. And then some people, on the other hand, are really weirded out by the concept that, you know, if 
for example, they've been running 20 Ks a day or 10, that's a lot, 10 Ks a day their, you know, their entire life. The concept of changing from that is really frightening. Um, so again, drastic acceptance, it's, quite a, it's actually, actually quite broad in what it covers, but drastic acceptance is understanding that change uh, is a part of life, right? So we accept that change is normal and change can be good. Um, change can be bad too, but also t you know, negative experiences, we don't have to avoid them altogether in life as well because that would be, well, there'd be no lessons learned, wouldn't there? So outside of that, it also helps improve our mental health and well-being, uh, drastic acceptance uh, and it's just literally sitting with something, not necessarily actually immediately needing a solution and not necessarily even needing action straight away with something which um, can sometimes be really strange for some people. They want to action something straight away. So it might be that you have gained a couple of kilos because you had a, a weekend out where you drank a ton of alcohol and you ate a ton of food and you might be really uncomfortable with that. You know, it might be coming around to the Monday and you've weighed yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I gained three kilos from the weekend. And so this is where we can have a better time with our mental health and our mental well-being if we um, can almost accept the idea that it's not permanent, you know, that that, that occurrence in our life is not permanent. We're not you know, what we did over the weekend, that's not, it's not like you gain three kilos and you'll never be able to, to drop the three kilos again. And so I think certainly in my eating disorder, it was really interesting because every time I gained, I would get that panic, you know, this idea that, oh no, I'm going to be fat. I'm going to be, and I know that word is really triggering for some people, but that's where it was for me. It was this idea that when I gained a kilo or when I gained 500 grams, that I would end up, that would be permanent. And it was this fear, constant fear that I couldn't undo what I'd done, right? So this is this idea that you're, you're constantly living in fear, right? Of, of things like a binge episode or things like, and you know, obviously um, I'm, I don't specialize in eating disorders, but it's really complex. And even for those who do binge on weekends, it's really complex. Coming back to the week and being able to accept that it is what it is, how do we move forward? How do we learn from this? That's the words I use quite often with clients. How do we move forward? How do we learn? What can we do, you know, coming from here? And every single person, I think at some stage in their life has done something quite disordered with their eating or with their training, you know, whether they've over-exercised or even so, I wouldn't even say disordered, but certainly maybe not, not exercised enough. You know, that's probably a large percentage of the population who just start moving enough at the moment we've got the obesity um, issue at hand and it's the elephant in the room that is being avoided so this is where we see that people are kind of again this whole pendulum swing it's like extreme dieting or uh, you know extreme overeating or extreme under eating extreme over exercising and they can't find this nice happy medium in the middle so Drastic acceptance can help you move forward from these from these episodes, right? All these uh, events in life where you know you might be in this stuck in a cycle where you're doing something that you know that you don't want to do, or maybe something that you feel guilty for, or maybe something that you want to do at the time and then regret later. Whatever it looks like, you know, whether it's binge eating or drinking a ton of alcohol or whatever. But then you're back in this pattern of you know, feeling guilty or, or not feeling good about yourself afterwards. And this is where, this is where drastic acceptance comes in. This is where it comes in and it can actually help you accept, move forward, feel, uh, learn, grow, etc., etc. If we don't use these lessons and if we get to a point where it's just constant repetition of negative patterns uh, and they're big swings too, it's like, you know, uh, give myself this thing that I really want right now, this instantaneous fix, and then crash and burn down from there and then punishment and then back up again. So uh, you see it quite often uh, with all sorts of people, not just people with eating disorders, but everyday people practicing this really, these really, really drastic swings. So it also helps us find our place of peace and calm. Probably this has really gone haywire. I wouldn't even, I'd say since COVID probably yes, 
But I honestly think that a massive contributor to this would be the fact that through COVID, a lot of people were locked up. We know that it was, you know, locked down and I won't even go into that topic itself. But people lost their place of peace and calm because the only place they could go was online. And unfortunately, technology is not and should not be a coping mechanism constantly for people. Yes, there's wonderful things that you can access online. Things like this exact video or this podcast that you're listening to, it can be life-changing. You listen to some podcasts and you think, I'm never the same after this, which is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. But by the same token, um, the lockdowns, the time where people were isolated, it puts so much pressure on mental health. It puts so much pressure on taking away the things that were safe for people that were coping mechanisms. And unfortunately, we've seen a massive rise in mental health conditions, suicide rates, like it's not a secret. The list goes on, we know it, the statistics are there. And uh, along with that, people have lost an ability to find their peace, their calm, their happy place, you know, and practice that mindfulness because they've been thrown into this completely different world, thrown back out of it, out of it again, and now they've got to figure out how to go back you know, how to, how to actually regulate, how to get yourself back to that point where your exercise is regular, where your nutrition is, you know, not an absolute mess and where it's normalized to treat yourself well and to be healthy, okay? And to actually, to eat enough fruit and veggies where it's actually cool, I hope one day, for you to take care of yourself because currently we're not, we're not quite there yet. They say that health is the new wealth, but I tend to disagree. I think that certainly for a minority, it is the new wealth, but it's still being treated like an afterthought. Um, and when we do find our, interestingly enough, when we do find our place of peace and calm, through acceptance, through, through learning, through growth, through self-awareness, etc., and self-reflection, we actually find that it improves like your overall health in every facet. So you're able to think clearly, you're able to make more informed decisions, you're able to you know, um, not think erratically, et cetera, et cetera. And that actually has an overflow effect into the way you treat yourself physically, the way you treat others, etc. So it's all very much interconnected and interwoven. And unfortunately, it seems to be a lost art at the moment. But I hopefully, I hopefully honestly do believe that we're finding a return to it, given that there are so many uh, you know, life mentors, health professionals out there really pushing for this. So hopefully you're here for that reason. It allows us to stop wasting energy on things that no longer matter if nothing can be done and the time has passed. So I honestly, this is just so massive with every client I've ever really had. Probably actually, I'm, I lie, there's, there's, there's been a small portion Actually, there has been a small portion of clients that move on pretty pretty easily from from adversity. It depends. It honestly depends on you know the severity for each person. It's completely different. You know, we can't determine how long it should take somebody to get past something or to grieve. But um, things like setbacks, you know, sickness, the usual stuff, kids, stress career issues, um, issues at work, like really it's a sliding scale. There's so many different things that can happen in your life at any given point in time. And obviously sickness is rife. Um, again, you know, immune systems haven't been that fantastic being locked down, etc. There's lots of different reasons why we get sick. But, you know, if you get sick and you can't make your training, um, I've seen a lot of people who miss their training and then they miss a whole week. Or they might miss a couple of days and then they, they just round it off to the whole week. Oh, well, you know, I missed the whole week. So I may, uh, missed four days or three days. So I may as well miss the whole week. So it, it allows you to stop wasting energy um, focusing on that though. You know, focusing on things that no longer matter. So the time has passed. You're not sick anymore. You know, hey, do you feel better? Good, excellent. Oh, but I'm finding it really hard to get back into the gym after I'm sick because I just lost my motivation. No, you haven't. You're stuck on the idea that you didn't train for three to four days. So see that? Being stuck in the past, being stuck on this concept that I didn't do that thing. So I'm just going to round it off to a whole week and start fresh on Monday. Um, people have a real attitude towards um, starting on a Thursday. You know, I feel good now. I'm, I, I'm great. Sickness is gone, done, dusted in the past. You know, uh, I hear from clients, oh, but I've, oh, I've lost strength. Oh, and this has happened. Oh, and I didn't buy any veggies this week. 
So I feel, I feel like crap and, you know, it's my fault. And this constant rumination over what has happened already, you know, or I stuffed up my calories. I ate an extra 500 calories yesterday. I'm so mad at myself. And this, again, uh, I, I don't encourage the idea of reducing your calories the next day to make up for the calories that you went over the day before. If it's like, if it's not a lot, sure. You can do that here and there. It's called calorie banking, but not to the point where you're using it as a weapon against yourself because of what you did yesterday. You know, bad girl, you ate over eight 500 calories, so now you've got to un under eat 500 the next day and feel like shit all day. No, no. So see that there is this toxic energy that we drag from the day before into the next day. Now, yes, from a mathematical perspective and yes, from a nutritional perspective, the energy input and output, you know, logically, it would make sense to reduce the calories the following day. But if you're doing it because it comes out of a place of spite for yourself, you've got to really get a hold of it and realize that accepting it's done, it's in the past, let it go, move on to the next day. You've got a fresh day to work with. It's a new day. As long as you're taking something from that experience and that you are learning, that you're not beating yourself up, you're not telling yourself you're a terrible person, just because we make mistakes, it doesn't make us a bad person, okay? And taking responsibility doesn't make us a bad person either. So this will all lead me into the, the points of what we can do to drastically accept, to help us practice acceptance, to help us move forward. Um, it also helps us stop trying to not deny, control or change things that are the way that they are, okay? This probably is more in reference to other people. I mean, I will say this from a point where my whole family is really different to each other and that's a good thing. I've got a mixture of different siblings from different parents. Um, I think in total there's uh, six of us or something like that, <laughs> I like last count. Uh, so in that though, all six of us are completely different people and as a, from a young age, it was really actually quite easy for me to accept this idea because I saw my older siblings all doing very different things with their life, all having incredibly different opinions about things, having an incredibly different polar opposite interests in things as well. And I think that far too many people these days are you know, trying to force their opinion down people's throats. You know, all of this that you're listening to on this podcast and on, in this blog, some of it comes from a factual standpoint where it might be that it's just nutrition facts. It is because it is science, right? And then there's some things with training because it's from practice, it's from evidence-based practice. Can that change? Sure, with lots of study over time. If you're speaking to somebody who has an open mind or at least is able to engage in you know, um, easy flowing discussion, debate, opinion versus obviously we talk about you know, uh, what we could call fact for now from a scientific perspective, but things can change, people can have different opinions, etc., etc. And people get really stuck on this idea that they want to be right. You know, it's just, it doesn't matter what it is, I need to be right. And so, again, this is practicing acceptance around the idea that people are different. You know, I know as a nutritionist that there are going to be people who fall uh, on my social media pages or my vlogs or my podcasts, or it might even be some of my reels, and they might go, oh, I don't want that. Oh, no, no, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. We don't have to win every argument. We don't have to win every person. So, you know, in our families, when we might be experiencing, it might be that you've gone on, you've just started a new fitness journey. Maybe you want to compete. Maybe you don't want to compete. Maybe you think competing is the worst thing in the world, and you think it's really toxic, but it doesn't actually matter what your standpoint is on other people's interests, uh, beliefs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Accepting that people have different beliefs, accepting that people have different methods, accepting that there are differences of opinions, and even accepting that there's different practice as well. I think certainly in the in the field of nutrition and training, it is really important to seek out the advice of a professional. You know, to go to somebody who is qualified. We can't just accept that uh, our neighbour has an opinion on nutrition and then take it. <laughs> Slightly different, but certainly just accepting that they have that opinion and then going on with your own life anyway. 
can really help us, really help us stay in our own lane. So something I started practicing years ago was letting go of what I couldn't control or change in other people in my life as well. Some things, you know, having chronic illnesses that I can't, I can't get better from but I can, I can help them, I just can't get rid of them. So instead of trying to constantly control, have control, seek a sense of control, actually allowing things to be as they are can give you a huge sense of relief around that. Uh, another one is, um, it can also help us identify our adult tantrums. So when things aren't going our way. So if when, for example, on a, on a fat loss journey, you know, you may not have lost the weight that you wanted to yet and you're, you're getting frustrated with yourself and, and your coach maybe, you know, why isn't this working and it's not working for me and, oh, my coach did this and it's just not, I don't know whether it's right for me. A lot of that is this stamping our feet stuff where we're not actually taking into account the variables we're not taking into account what could actually be happening from a non-emotional standpoint that we might be going through a cycle or in our period uh, cycle or you know that you might have you might have had a binge eating episode over the weekend you might have overeaten your calories whatever it might have been and we're getting very emotional about the idea that this isn't working for us so this is this identifying our adult tantrums you know, and I've, I've had a few adult tantrums in my time where I've gone, oh, I just wish I didn't have to do this and I, nah, 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 and mm, that's not fair. You know, life, is, life isn't fair. We know that life is not fair. It doesn't help uh, stamping our feet. Often if we let ourselves have a little bit of a, of a feel and aware about it, but then also step back from it and accept what, what is, accept what's needed. And that's where that taking responsibility comes into play where, a lot of our issues with our nutrition and training could be resolved if we took more responsibility for our own actions and behavior. Uh, easier said than done. I see it happen a lot less than it does happen. However, people do get to a turning point where they realize that taking responsibility doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you're an awful human. It doesn't mean that you're not capable because we all make mistakes. We're all human. It just means taking responsibility and then you can plan the the next step forward from there until you take responsibility if you continue to avoid you find no way forward and we end up back in that cycle and that's obviously where you can take responsibility if you can't if it's things that again that are out of your control and I talk about this in control out of control what is it in your control is it out of your control you know in the list of in your control you've got whether you go to the gym tonight because you've got the time to do so and you know, you've got the crèche to, to use at the gym. In your control, procrastinating about your meal prep, yeah? In your control, tracking your food in advance because you've got 15 minutes to do it while you watch a movie or watch an episode of whatever. In your control, getting your steps done instead of sitting on your bum and playing PlayStation or Xbox. In your control, I mean the list goes on, right? Getting to sleep on time instead of staying up late on technology or instead of staying up late, having a phone call instead of putting up that boundary with that person where you could have gone, hey, I'm, I need to get my sleep. I need to get my eight hours. Sorry, I need to go to bed. Not in your control. Sickness, injury, grief is a big one, right? So that's where we see heartbreak and things like loss of a loved one or whether you've got, um, you know, your kids are a big one because kids, what kids do it's not in our control what kids do however we can't use them as a scapegoat all the time because that's another one that can go into in control where you might have gotten past it but you might be holding on to it and then uh, out of your control is things like natural disasters you know the whole COVID situation out of your control out of your control <laughs> your gym shut down or the power is out or you know, your car broke down, like the list goes on of out of control, the things that you could not have controlled, the things you could have controlled, not being planned for your weekend ahead when you went away and packing the food that you probably needed to stay on track, in your control, it definitely is. If you can easily slot them into these two categories, you can know which one you can take full responsibility for, or maybe partial responsibility, might be someone else in there involved, or on the other, on the, on the other hand, out of your control, um, this is this whole bucket of like, is there anything you could have done, you know, right? So yesterday I got hit with a really painful 
uh, period, a cycle, right? And I talk very openly about female cycles. If you don't like it, tune out. But I got hit with one really hard. And for the women out there who understand this, not in my control, not in my control. Because why? Because it comes around every month. What is in my control is understanding my limitations of what I'm comfortable doing with my cycle and knowing, you know, my pain levels, etc. And eating well, you know, not letting my food go to absolute shit, drinking enough water, getting enough sleep while I'm taking care of myself while, while I have my cycle. So when we can separate those, we actually have this really, really good time with accepting, accepting things as they are, if, they, if we are partly responsible, fully responsible, whatever, and then also accepting things as they are if we cannot control them. And do you know what? There is so much freedom in putting it into those slots. Sometimes it's somewhere in the middle. Some of it was in our control, some of it wasn't. You know, it doesn't matter. What can we sort into what box? What can we control coming out of this? What can we, can, what, what can we not control coming out of this? But we need to focus on what we can do not get really stuck on what we can't because it's really like going to a roadblock, right? Driving right up to a roadblock and going, oh, there's a detour and just sitting there. You're just sitting there at the detour, swearing at it, hoping it'll move instead of, uh, you know, there's the sign. Instead of just driving around it, just take the detour. You're wasting energy and time staring at the detour sign swearing. Have a little swear. You know, that sucks. Now it's going to take an extra 10 minutes to get to work. But drive around it. Tooting your horn and getting angry is only going to piss the guy off that's doing the roadworks and make him take longer. So, again, in our control, out of control. It's a, a, an amazing concept that can simplify a lot of things as well in life. So it teaches us humility when we're learning. Acceptance teaches us humility when we're learning. Um... The reason why I created the macro tracking course was because I was so sick of people saying to me, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I suck at it. I'm really bad at it. And even when I created the course, I've got all these videos for people to watch and they don't watch them. And instead they just sit there and they, they get really annoyed at themselves. And I pose this idea to you. If you don't like not knowing, Maybe it's time to invest your time in learning instead of complaining about not knowing because complaining about not knowing doesn't get you any closer to where you want to be. And once you know, once you've got a skill, once you've developed something, we all know this, unless you've got a serious memory issue, like brushing your teeth, like putting your shoes on, you get better at it, you get better at it to the point where you can do it with your eyes shut, okay? So macro tracking falls into that category. Yes, it's a skill, okay? It's for some people, they get it really quickly because that's the way their brain works. For others, you might say to yourself, I really struggle with this, I struggle with numbers, and it, honestly, people overthink it and think it's numbers focused, it's really not that bad, it's just add and, add and um, subtract, okay? It's actually not that bad. Use a calculator if you get really stuck. But if you get stuck on this idea that I don't know yet, you know, you're getting stuck on the thing you can't control again. I, you can't control the fact you don't know yet. What can you control? Oh my God, learning, wow. What can you control? Exposing yourself to the thing that helps you get better, yeah? So accepting which path you've got to take from there instead of sitting, staring at the roadblock. So it helps us learn, it helps us with humility. Also, if we don't practice humility, if we don't practice a point Honestly, sometimes I get questions from people, from clients, and they go, hey, I've got this, especially with like really complex injuries, because that's just not my niche, and it never will be. I'm not interested in complex injuries. I want to send someone to a physio who loves that type of stuff. I like mindset, nutrition, and training for physique goals, right, and lifestyle. And obviously goal setting for business clients as well who, who want to be coaches, and motivational shit. I love it. I love it. So... But my humility is if somebody asks me a question that's too complex and goes, look, I got this happening, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, ooh, that's either beyond my scope. Like, I can't tell, give you that advice, not directly, because I don't know whether this is going to be the right answer. And I say that. I'm like, oh, I think you should see this person for that issue. Right? If you've got a complex hormonal issue, I'm going to send you to an endocrinologist. Okay? Because I know that you need to see that person. 
and I know that that's a that's humility that's practicing humility for myself because I, I don't know everything I can't nobody does so when you accept you actually allow yourself to be humble you know and to just understand that you can't know everything and it's okay not to so it helps us let go of jealousy I'm gonna I'm gonna list these off because we all know we've been there it helps us let go of jealousy hatred bitterness Prolonged anger that may be keeping you trapped in a cycle of suffering. Have you held a grudge against somebody for the last decade and you just haven't dropped it? Maybe just, you don't have to talk to the person, but maybe just in your mind, it could be, I don't know, someone who used to be a gym buddy and they're not anymore because they stole your workout routines or they didn't show up to the gym workouts or they ditched you and used somebody else as a gym buddy. I don't know. Whatever it might look like. Sometimes it helps just letting go of that in our mind and just going, you know what, it's no longer a problem to me, not carrying that with you anymore. So drastic acceptance actually helps us let go of the shit feelings that are making us feel shit, <laughs> right? Bitterness is a massive one. I see people like looking at my life and going, oh, I wish I had what you had, you know, I wish I was successful, I wish I had my own business, I wish I was fit and had lots of muscle I want I want to look like you mm-hmm, what you want but in a, such a bitter way uh, I actually do really know that there are people out there who are bitter as fuck with what I've achieved in my life but it's not just me they're bitter at they're bitter at the world they're bitter at more than one person I don't have a single person that I'm bitter at for what they've achieved for themselves I have no reason to hold bitterness so again, accepting is letting go of shitty, just shitty, shitty feelings that you don't need to hold on to. You don't need them. You don't need them inside you. Not for a prolonged period of time. It helps us to stop fighting reality, okay? So stop fighting what is right in front of us, which is things like you need to get your shit together with your food. You need to get your shit together with your training. That's reality. If we fight that or avoid it, Oh no, it must be something else. There must be something else. Um, We then end up, we don't ever end up with the solution and we certainly don't end up with a better experience of it. Um, Yeah, such as sickness, injury, kids, issues with kids, you know, I wish this didn't happen, I wish that that didn't happen. Well, it did. You know, we can't wish. It just did. Stop ruminating, uh, helps us stop ruminating of, of thoughts of what if or I should have. I've heard that so much. I should have. I could have. I w- no, nah. You will next, right? It, what we could have done, what we should have done, what ifs, they don't actually matter. They only matter if you're looking at how can I use that lesson to plan what I'm doing next instead of getting stuck on what could have happened. We don't know. We don't know because it didn't. So the next point, uh, I use this quite a lot it's a bad day not a bad life I I really am not saying that we're not allowed to have moments because we are we all have really even I have shit moments god I've had a few today been in a bit of pain uh I don't necessarily think that it means you know not acknowledging that because part of accepting is acknowledging and going yep yeah you know I haven't been able to eat as much food today because I've been in a lot of pain but I will tonight I've got plans to eat more, what can I do now? What can I do moving forward? But it's not a bad life, it's just a day. I'm in pain today, but it doesn't make my whole life terrible. You know, then I'm able to bring myself back to this idea that there are lots of other wonderful things that I have or to look forward to or to have hope. But we can uh, stop rounding our whole lives up to this, you know, this it's all bad or all good concept. Acceptance can allow us to Uh, accept a a moment or a feeling or a day or you know going off track with your food or missing some sessions or not having a great training session or not knowing how to use a piece of equipment there are so many things but it doesn't make your life bad it doesn't make you a bad person it doesn't as a whole picture make everything terrible it's that moment that experience or that day or that hour or that minute on, yeah, exactly. And on the other hand, normalizing the idea it's okay to have a shit time with some things. So uh, I, I see this as well, like on the other side where people are so quick to jump to 
uh, this terrible thing happened, they might have a car accident, something bad might happen in their life. And they're like, oh, coach, I'm so sorry this happened and I, I promise I'll get back to gym and, you know, oh man. And I'm like, you just had a car accident. You just need to chill down, like chill out and calm down. Okay. Because it's okay to normalize when, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's, that's full on. Like, how do you feel right now? Do you feel like shit? Yeah. Okay, cool. Probably accept that. Just sit with it. Yes. So acceptance isn't just accepting where you need to move forward to or glorifying the idea of, you know, um, moving forward from adversity. Acceptance is also accepting when, okay, I probably need to take it easy. This is pretty full on. So this will be different per person and per experience, but nobody gets to decide that but you. And sometimes it's an inside conversation, but also realizing if you're a person who's constantly telling the world, I'm okay when you're not, or you are struggling, um, a lot of acceptance will, will actually involve just reaching out and saying, coach, I gotta be honest, I'm struggling with this workout. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be and I can't do the full four sets. My back really hurts. What can I do instead? Instead of persevering, pushing, getting injured uh, and not acknowledging your own feelings because you feel weak or you feel like you should just not have feelings. That's, that's the whole other polar opposite side is it's not just about moving forward. It's also about acknowledging when you know you might be palming things off. It helps us reduce impulsive or destructive behaviors such as addictions, as I mentioned previously. So um, I have no addictions anymore, not one. I, and if I can feel any slightly creeping back in again, I nip right in the bud and I, I think to myself, what am I not doing for myself? How am I not taking care of myself? How am I not taking time away? You know, what can I do? What can I do now to prevent that, those types of behaviors or patterns returning? So... The next point, it probably brings you towards this idea that we need more neutral standpoints and feelings towards sometimes topics, um, ideas, you know, learning to be more neutral, to be less, to be uh, less emotive around concepts that are just, they are just that way, you know. It requires a calorie deficit to lose body fat. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. Is it an emotional thing? No. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. <laughs> right? But is, it, is that fact an emotional fact? No, it's not personal. I'm not telling you you need to eat less food to lose body fat because I don't like you. I'm telling you that because it's a scientific fact. Yes? So uh, neutral standpoints and feelings towards things can help us actually take them on. Take it on board. Take the feedback. Take the advice not feel like your coach is attacking you, not feel like, you know, uh, your friend is attacking you because they can lift a heavier weight than you and, and, or you feel jealous of them or do you feel like you should be where they are, etc. Having neutral standpoints or even being happy for other people's happiness and being neutral and not feeling negative about something that doesn't need a negative thought pattern uh, can help us um, feel less swayed in one direction. It can help us feel less divided. It can help us uh, let go of resentment. Again, anger and frustration, that is wasted energy because it doesn't need to be there in that moment. So ways that we can obviously practice drastic acceptance, I'm gonna move through these pretty quickly. Acknowledging reality and feelings for what they are instead of avoiding them. Acknowledging that the past is not your current present. Practicing uh, mantras. Sayings, quotes, etc., for coping. So having, I love looking up quotes and just reading quote after quote after quote after quote. They don't all have to be motivational. Some of it's just accepting the way you feel. Some of it's rele relevant to what you're going through at the time. But quotes and mantras can really help bring your your headspace back to where it needs to be. Especially if you're um, in a struggle point in your fitness or nutrition journey or in your life as well. So. Letting go of the things you can't control. Literally, let go of them. Let go of them now, especially, especially if you can't control them. If there's something that is just beyond your control, give it less time. Uh, identifying working, to, uh, working points. Uh, yeah, identify your working points without putting yourself down. So let it be something to look forward to instead of thinking of yourself as a failure. Because I can tell you now, you're not the only person who has things to improve on. Set large and small goals to give you something to work towards on that note as well. So if you've got things to improve, look at it as a goal. Look at them as multiple goals. Celebrate your accomplishments. Focus on what you have done, what on not, not on what you haven't. 
okay? Don't be so self-critical constantly because if you don't acknowledge where you are and what you've achieved, then again, you can't accept what you have become successful at. You can't accept the good in your life. You can't accept the good things that have happened and you become very focused on what is not good or what you perceive to be a personal downfall. Uh, meet, meet the constant negative thoughts. Just try to meet those constant negative thoughts like, I don't like the way that I look, you know, I don't like that my, my pants aren't fitting me, etc., 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 with some opposing positive ones. So I get these daily. You know, I'm in an off season right now. I am thick as hell and I'm growing my muscle. And yes, I am self conscious at times. There are times when I get into clothing and think, oh, my pants are tight at the moment. Obviously, my priority right now is my health, my hormonal cycle. Uh, my uh, female hormone cycle, which is actually starting to sort itself out. I, I do get very painful um, periods with a condition I've got. But outside of that, though, again, condition can't control it. What can I control? My current health. Also, with my composition currently, I can't control my current composition because I'm working towards balancing my health. But what I can control is my attitude towards my composition. So sometimes it looks like saying to myself, okay, instead of beating myself up because I don't have a six pack at the moment, it might look like nah, my bum looks quite nice right now, right? Well, my, thick, my thighs are starting to get nice and thick and getting a decent amount of muscle. And I look nice in a dress. I look nice and curvy. And a lot of this is meeting these constant negative thinking patterns with some positive ones where it's not about toxic positivity, but certainly about trying to meet yourself in the middle where you can see your strengths as well as the things you're not so happy about because it's okay to have both of those. So, uh, but not all thoughts need to be positive. Obviously, accept the shitty thoughts are normal too. So again, just accepting. See how a lot of this is, is literally just accepting as the whole concept of this, of this podcast. So plan ahead, think forward, not backward. Okay, so again, acceptance involves understanding that Again, you can't change what has happened, but you can change what you do moving forward. If I hear a person repeating themselves and repeating themselves and repeating themselves about something that is done and finished, I try to shift them over here, which is, okay, cool. I'm really glad that you told me that. I'm glad you got it out. You know, how do you feel? Oh, cool. Okay. What are we going to do moving forward, right? We need to try and shift into that direction, not super quickly, but certainly in a way that allows you not to ruminate and beat yourself up because we don't want to stay there. So planning ahead can actually help you do this because a lot of, you know, a lot of um, running into obstacles comes from not being prepared, not being organized. If you're saying to yourself, I'm not organized, practice being more organized. And how do you do that? It's very different for everybody. There's a podcast that I have on being more organized, so please listen to it. Um, if you can, are you stressed or are you disorganized? Solutions focused mindset. I have had many people in my life tell me to have a solutions focused mindset. It actually used to piss me off. And now I know why it pissed me off is because I didn't have one. You know, I was constantly problems focused. And I think having a solutions focused mindset, it actually, all it does is just allows you to entertain the idea that there is something you can do moving forward, that there is a way forward, not putting up roadblocks for yourself, not putting up obstacles in front of the obstacles that already exist and trying to find a way around it, working with something, not working against it. Learn, grow and move on always. If we do not learn, grow and move on, we remain stagnant. And I know that every one of you can think of a person in your life, might be you, that struggles with moving on or moving forward. And a lot of this is uh, focused on choices for sure. So again, learning from your experiences, mistakes, your journey, your fitness journey, your nutrition journey, your, your food, your exercise, it's an ongoing project. And we always learn and we always grow. Even I'm still learning and growing 10 years into mine. Be kind and gentle with yourself and others, okay? So um, you're gonna have to remind yourself to do this daily. Again, it's like the mindfulness. You have to bring yourself back to it constantly. If you find yourself getting nasty with you or getting nasty with others, you've got a reality check ahead of you. Other people aren't the problem, okay? Look inside yourself and the way you speak to yourself and others because it has a massive influence on your life. Embrace what makes you you, what makes you unique. Remember, you are a human, not a robot. 
Okay, so um, those two points, uh, I think is certainly, you know, there was a stage there in your life, there would have been a stage there where you realized, I'm not so bad the way I come. And somewhere along the lines, we all got mixed up in this idea that we had to be like other people or that we had to be somebody else other than ourselves. So uh, drastic acceptance is understanding that you will never be anybody else and you shouldn't be ever for any reason. And remember you're a human, not a robot. Uh, again, this is the whole perfectionism concept. You're gonna have to accept that you're not perfect. You never should be and striving for that will only leave you miserable. Let go of judgments of yourself and others. It is not healthy and it will consume you. Can't tell you the type of conversation that I hate engaging in, which is super judgmental. Admittedly, occasionally I catch myself with it because I get quite passionate about topics and certainly um, I'm very, my morals are very high, so I don't like seeing people get hurt. But I think, and also seeing people led in the wrong direction. But I think that from a perspective of just judging people for the sake of it or being a mean girl or being bitchy or being an asshole or just literally just acting like an absolute twat or bitching on social media or ranting and raving all over the place because you haven't dealt with your own shit usually as it's usually that um there's a difference between uh expressing your feelings directly to a person and, and having it up with them and publicly shaming humiliating other people and making fun of them right very 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 different make sure you know the difference and make sure that you realize when maybe your thoughts of judgment of other people or of yourself, really harsh judgment of yourself, which you know you're doing, uh, check yourself, right? Audit yourself for that because it will consume you. And if it does, that's where your mind will stay. So if it doesn't concern you on that note too, why does it matter? Mind your own business, okay? It doesn't matter what calories she's on. It doesn't matter what training program she's doing. It doesn't even matter whether he's doing steroids it doesn't matter whether they aren't dating anymore it doesn't okay it doesn't matter how much some money somebody is earning it is not your business a lot of uh drastic acceptance is accepting that uh it really other people's business doesn't matter it doesn't concern us so constantly trying to convince other people of things or you know fix things or make other people do things if they're not paying you stop doing that <laughs> okay stop doing that stop it stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and worry about your goddamn self because you're using it as a distraction so Forgive you, I honestly stopped giving a fuck a long time ago, like a long time ago. I would probably say, I would say about eight years ago, roughly. When I went through my anorexia recovery, I started to care less about what other people thought of me because I realized that it didn't matter. And it didn't matter what other people were doing either. I realized that I'm a separate human being. You know, we're separate entities. Right? So we don't need to have this constant feeling of coercion and control of one another. And uh, especially not, especially not if they're not someone in your direct circle. Why do you care? And even then, stop trying to control your friends. Um, let them be who they want to be. You know, that's again, accept them the way they are. Accept yourself the way that you are. Forgive yourself frequently. Okay? Again, on the whole, you're human thing. You make mistakes. Forgive yourself. Okay, if you've done a really awful thing, like well, I'm talking like illegal shit, okay, probably, <laughs> probably a lot harder to forgive yourself for that. But if you're making little mistakes here and there and you are dragging yourself through the mud instead of just forgiving yourself and moving forward, it's different if you're forgiving yourself and then doing the same thing over and over again. That makes no sense. But certainly <laughs> just forgive yourself frequently. Trust me, it helps. Uh, give less fucks, as I said, about small things, comments, opinions of others, finding the need to have the last word, always be right, or find someone else's acceptance of you. Like, stop it. Stop trying to get them to love you all the time. People will love you the way you are because they do, and that's okay. You don't need to change who you are to meet everyone else's expectations of you. Just be who you are. I am who I am every single day. I rock up, and it's funny. I actually have a much better experience of my life being myself now more than ever than I did when I was trying to impress 50,000 different people at once. You know, I don't do that. It, it, the, people think being on social media that my objective is to get people to like me. Fuck no. No, it's not. Because people like me or they don't. And it makes no sense for me to shift, adjust and change myself. So I just go with my own ebb and flow. 
and you should be doing the same. Go with your own ebb and flow. Let yourself gravitate towards people who make you feel good about yourself, for yourself, who encourage you in your life, etc., etc., etc. But certainly, give less fucks. It's it is the most freeing experience that you will uh, that you'll ever really have. So, again, I'll just touch on this one really quickly. Um, being open to learning. Again, it's not a hit to your ego to be wrong, to learn something new, it can help you have a different experience of life, okay? So if you've been going around in circles constantly and wondering why, but you're not open to learning and you're not open to new things or change, reality check, that may be the problem. Especially if you're seeking out professional help and all of the professional people are saying very similar things and you're still avoiding it. So accept responsibility for your part. This doesn't make you a bad person. Accept responsibility for your part in whatever it might have been. Behaviour towards yourself, behaviour towards other people, uh, making a mistake, the list goes on, not doing something, doing something. Um, Accepting responsibility, I think, was certainly something that maybe as kids, I don't know, that we just didn't like doing because we meant we were in trouble. And now we're always in trouble with ourselves when we do it. But I I accept responsibility today. I didn't eat my lunch until four o'clock. I was in so much pain, I felt sick, okay? Not an excuse, could have eaten lunch earlier, could have taken myself through that, but I didn't. So I'm accepting responsibility. Am I a bad person? No. Am I a bad nutritionist? No. Am I setting a bad example? No, not particularly. You know, no no one else is going to go and do that because I've just said it's a silly idea. So again, accepting responsibility without saying I'm a shit human being. You can do it. It doesn't make you a bad person. Defense and attack, okay, I talked about this earlier, are not the only positions that you can sit in. You can also listen and not take something on board. So um, if someone's ranting at you, raving at you about the latest fad diet or they're telling you that what you're doing is unhealthy if you're tracking macros or it could be anything. It could be you're doing a bodybuilding show. It could be that you're doing powerlifting and people think you're going to break your back. Just let people talk. You don't have to accept it. You don't even have to like what they've got to say. You can just nod. Okay, cool. That's nice. Good to know. You know, (laughs) and defense is not always a permanent position either. So you don't have to jump on them and go, oh, well, that's not right. I'm going to get you. Especially if you know that they're pretty notorious for not listening to open discourse. Right? We know them. We've got those people in our life who are just like, yeah, I've started this new cleanse and I am, you know, I can only do it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because on the other days my body is doing, you know, the list, you know what I'm talking about, like those ones that you think, what are you doing? But we don't have to attack them. We can, yeah, oh, you know, well, I mean, have you tried this? Like maybe we could, like if you think this person's really close to you and you think, oh shit, this is going to go bad. Yep, yeah, sure, have your say. If they don't want to hear about it and they don't want to borrow it, You don't need to keep going. Don't attack people in an attempt to save them because that never works. So defense and attack isn't, you can actually stay in the middle. You can be neutral. And I've been in that position myself, you know, where people have literally tried to talk to me about nutrition who aren't qualified. I've had people, (laughs) I've had my loved ones tell me about what they think about nutrition who aren't qualified. And I haven't felt the need to argue with them. Why? Because I know it doesn't leave me anywhere, especially if I've tried to do that before. And defense as well, being really defensive of yourself, defending your position and reasoning for doing something. If you've chose to do something in your life, anything, if you choose to go to the gym, if you choose to, I don't know, wear a certain piece of clothing, if you choose to uh, have a certain thing for breakfast because you like the taste of it, please don't let other people come in uh, and steal your energy for you to defend your decisions in life for your own health and your own needs because it is exhausting being in that position defending all the time so again going back to a neutral standpoint accepting and just letting it be um the next point remind yourself that it is what it is i hate that saying and yet i love it at the same time because sometimes it can help you let go of um rumination uh that it is what it is currently and sit with the idea that it doesn't need to be acted on straight away straight away and sometimes if we do act on things immediately it can um cause us more harm than good so some things they don't need to be actioned or spoken about immediately 
and that you can wait a little bit and, until you've calmed down or until the dust has settled. Allow yourself to feel sad and disappointed, okay? If today sucked, if you couldn't make it to the gym, if your session was, was half assed, yeah. If you need to have a cry, if you need to just go, oh, far out, this is the day from hell, right? Let yourself have that moment, okay? It's okay to accept sadness and disappointment. If we don't, sometimes it comes back to bite us in the ass later anyway. So again, things get dragged out longer than they need to be. And finally, the, the final two points is don't feel shame for having emotion and don't allow others to impose this on you. This idea that emotion or decisions that you've made that, that you feel good about uh, are wrong, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's crazy how much you see this, this happen, but uh, people really have freedom to make choices for themselves. And I, I, it's funny, as a coach, I see this all the time. I've seen people make lots of choices that aren't great Especially if I said, oh, I don't know, like maybe we could try this and they're, oh, no, I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, you know, I never impose things on people if I know that they're just not going to take it. And certainly if they, they're, they're hell bent on trying it and doing it they went the way that they want to or, or even feelings they've got, I won't try and impose this idea that they're not meant to feel them. And so certainly don't let others do the same thing to you. If you find people repeatedly doing this, maybe they're not a person that you want to talk to very much about that type of thing because they're constantly uh, imposing their emotions and what they would do onto you. Seek out social support and or support of a psychologist, coach, friend, family member or mentor is my final point because obviously you can't live off my podcast. I wish you could <laughs> uh, but you can't okay. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. I am a life coach, a mentor, a nutritionist, and a fitness coach. And I certainly discovered a lot of this stuff along my own journey, in my own therapy, of course, but everybody is so incredibly different, okay? We all have so many different idiosyncrasies, personality traits, personality types, preferences, the list goes experiences, traumas, blah, 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 like the list goes on as to why we are so different. And one vlog doesn't fit them all. It's not a one size fits all you might find you do need professional help. The reason why I make references to this a lot, things like therapy, things like seeing specialists for the issues that you have, is because they exist for a reason. Okay, that's about it from me. I'm gonna finish up um, just on the, on the hour, a bit past the hour. I hope you really enjoyed the vlog and podcast. If you're still tuned in, thank you so much for being so patient with me. And please like, subscribe, and share because it helps us get our, uh, our podcasts and our vlogs out to the world. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to doing another one for you soon. Bye.